St. Helens then on uh, Friday night. You've beaten them twice already this season. Yeah. Three, third time, they'll be extra keen to make sure you don't want the lummy. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's obviously going to be a tough game. But they've, they've, they've found some form in the last couple of weeks and, you know, coming off that semi-final loss to us in the Challenge Cup, will, that'll certainly motivate them. It won't be the... The, what drives them this week, you know, it's it's about staying and holding that first position for them. But for us, it's about making sure that we go there with our strongest team and, and again, you know, keep our performance up following off after the Huddersfield win. Well, what do you make of St. Helens this season? They've been under the radar for a lot of the time, but they seem to be coming good at the right moment. Yeah, no, I've watched them closely. You know, they're, they're obviously when they've had that great World Cup victory, uh, World Club Challenge victory, in Australia, it was amazing for their club. They've come back from that and sort of hit a wall a little bit there, but they found their way back. But I've been watching them closely over the last two or three months, and they've certainly found a way to win with each other. And, and again, those those standards are, are back to where they need to be as a club. So they're they're one of the clubs, uh, one of the informed clubs in Super League at the moment, and rightly so. They're equal top of the table. So what are, who are the key players then? Would you say that you'll be looking out for? Oh, you know, just the the normal crew that, that, are, that have been great for them with, with Wellsby and, and Lomax and Roby. I mean, that's the key from, I think, James Bell there at the moment is playing a real pivotal role for them. I'm similar one to what we're doing. So they, they've, they've added to their game with him in, in that 13 position. And, and, you know, I think they're playing a nice brand of rugby. So what about your side then? Obviously, the longest game of Super League in the history of the sport. Um, <laughs> How are your lads feeling after having to go out and play an extra 32 minutes? Yeah, it was obviously different and, and, a, and a first uh, for Super League and, and Rugby League here, but it was difficult to pre- prepare the boys after the game and because the other thing was, you know, when we finished the game on Friday night, we had to wait around an hour before they made a decision that the game wasn't going to continue. So there was also that downtime as well and then into Saturday and Sunday. So it ruined the weekend, but we got the two points uh, as... as you know, we, we, we would have liked to and it's kept us in that fourth spot which is really important to us and we, we played some really good rugby throughout that, that those two two um, days and, you know, I'm very pleased with where we're at at the moment. But what about your injuries though? I mean, Frankie Holton came on I presume he, he got through it okay. But what about any others? Anybody else picked up knocks? Uh, you know, just, I think, very very happy for, for, for Frankie. You know, he's had minimal time here and then he's had that operation so... He looks like he's back from that, and, and he's and he certainly helped us. Uh, he, he added a little bit of his own X factor into our team on the weekend, which is exactly what we needed. So, just a couple of niggly injuries to, to Charnley and, and Asiata. Um, just Asiata's calves they've got a slight uh, strain to it. So, we'll give those guys up until kickoff to, to make a decision, and, and it's business as usual. Well, should those guys not make it, what type of options do you have then to, to come in? I've got a few boys that haven't played there for a couple of weeks such as Oliver Holmes and, and Ed Chamberlain and and the likes of you know Arva Simon Afanai and Nathan Wiles so you know those players Matty Davis never played last week as well so the the two will come out of that four I would say but you know it, it doesn't really matter whether they're involved this week I, I'd also like to see how the team handles the, the, the game without them and uh, looking through this week I mean, when you played Saints in the Challenge Cup, there was all the controversy about John Asiata, which mm-hmm. we thought we got over, and it's been brought up by Lou McCarthy Scarsbrook again this week. What do you feel right. about that? Yeah, I wasn't aware of that, but I, I, we've sort of moved on here as a club. You know, I, I, it's it's one of those moments in, in rugby league where it's a talking point and then we get on with it. So, you know, I, I can't see too much change in this week from the way that we played that game and every other game that we've done this year. And looking ahead to next season, are you in the middle of recruitment that uh, you will reveal to us shortly? Yeah, I, th- I think we've done reasonably reasonably well. Uh, still going, obviously, as, as every club is. And I, I think when the time's right, that'll those, those players will be announced. And, you know, I'm just, just really happy and grateful for the current squad. We've had a lot of changes this year. I think we've got the smallest squad in Super League. I think we've changed something like nearly 16 players, I think, have been new to the club this year. And... We'll continue to rotate those, rotate those players and get the right ones in until we're in a position where we're, we're in the top two continuously. So the club's you know, in a very uh, great position to be able to um, negotiate and, and talk to other players. It's a difficult position that we were in, different to what we were in last year, where we were 
still hadn't won the championship and trying to uh, negotiate contracts and, and, and recruits for, for Super League. But it's been a little bit easier to this process and, and it's ongoing on a week-to-week basis. Cheers, Lonnie. That's uh, okay for me. Thanks, Thanks very much. No problem. Lonnie, just on that one, is there anything you can say on, on Ben Reynolds? He's been linked with a p- potential move to Fev at the end of the season. Is is there anything in that? I mean, yeah. Ben loves it at Lee. Yeah, I think it's been ongoing here with Ben and obviously clubs clubs outside of Lee have come in and, and negotiated with him. We're, we're continuing continuing to talk to him about that and um, no doubt some sort of decision will be made either way in the next couple of weeks. So there is a chance he could sign a new deal with, with the Leopards if, if things worked out? Yeah, it's it, like I said, Trevor, it's, it's ongoing. Uh, you know, it's it's in the hands of Chris Chester and and, uh, and, and the management of, of Ben Reynolds. So... You know, Ben's done some great things for us this year and, and him as a player at this club over the last two years have been phenomenal and you know he certainly has played a massive part in who we've become in the last two years and um, you know I, he's an important part of our, our squad especially with the finals coming up too so this needs to get sorted either way so that we can get some clarity into his head on the players that you mentioned who haven't got ha- sorry who haven't had much game time recently how tough is it for them? And for you to leave them out, but for them to feel integrated into into the squad, and they've just got to sit there on the sidelines week in week out because you've made minimal changes, as you say. Yeah, well, fortunately, the the positive out of this year is that we've a lot of the players have played every every week. You know, whilst we've had injuries such as the Kai O'Donnells for for big parts of the season, well, the majority of the squad has been in good nick. So. Having said that, it, it is a real challenge to balance the squad and keep everyone happy. That's never always going to be the case because you, cause you've got players that want to play, obviously. But I think the great part about the people within the group, within the squad, is they understand the situation. They've been communicated very clearly on what their position and roles are. And moving forward for the remainder of the season, they understand what role they'll play. So I think I think we've managed that part really well. Uh, we've just got to get on now with, with the players we have um, and get some momentum leading into these last three games into the finals. And just the last couple from me, Lamy. Any um, updates on Ricky Latelli? Is there any chance he could play again this season if he got through to the playoffs? What, what, where, yeah, no, where is he at? No, Ricky will, is, is out for the rest of the season. So Ricky's oh. had the, the, the disc uh, fusion. Uh, that, that'll take probably up to four months to be right. So he's only, you know, uh, what is it, eight weeks into that now. So he's got a, a long time to go. Right. We, we okay. And then the so. last one is just a, a word on or two on the ladies. They, they're playing the LSV, I think, this weekend. Chance to win the league and also get automatic promotion. Just the job that Kieran's done with them. Yeah, Kier, Kieran's done an amazing job there, and a lot of credit should go to him. The way that they've built that squad, and but also built momentum during the season. You know, it, it's 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 always hard getting a new squad in and trying to manage that process like we did last year in in, in championship ourselves, but. You know, for those girls to, to, to come together as a group and you can see them playing for each other every week, that's been an inspiration to our first team here, you know, with, with us at the, at the Leopards. And, you know, we've talked about them a lot and, you know, they've got a big game here on on Sunday to, to win that minor premiership to get that automatic promotion. So a lot of the players will be here supporting them there and we wish them all the best. And I, I know the fans will get out here as well and support them in big numbers. Smashing. Thank you very much, Lamy. Thanks, Jeff. Hi, I'll be up you well. You're on, Drew. I'm good. Yourself? Yeah, very well, thank good. you. Uh, that win over over Huddersfield last week, I know uh, you, you talked after that Challenge Cup win that you was anticipating a bit of a a bit of a slump in form after after that due to the obviously the, the celebrations etc. Do you, do you feel like the the team are back to the best now with yeah. that win over? Yeah, ab- absolutely. You know, I still think there's improvement in us in in a lot of areas, uh, but. But the, the attack that we did here, uh, I think we bombed five or six tries in the game where on another day we, we would have executed them rightly. But we're putting ourselves in a position to score those tries. So grateful that we're back to that part there. Um, obviously, always working on our defence and trying to minimise the points against. And it was difficult to get that those two separated ga- days together and, and a result. But a result that we're really proud of. Like I said, it keeps us in fourth spot, guarantees us a spot in the finals there and um, you know it's just it's just important that we build momentum now yeah you've, you've talked uh, quite a few times in, in the last couple of weeks about finishing in, in the top four you are on course to, to finish in the top four with three games remaining mm-hmm. how important for you for yourself would it be to, to get that top four finish but 
how important would it be for, for the club as a whole in, in the first season back in Super League? Just just really important because of the hard work that we've put in. You know, it's been a long season and as long as it's been, it's just, it's unbelievable how quickly it's come around to three games to go. It's, it's unbelievable. But I think the Challenge Cup towards the end of the year was a real difficult part to get over that, celebrate that, then try to come back to earth with only minimal games left. I think, you know, that probably needs to change for the RFL moving forward. But having said that, at the start of the season, if you were to say, look, you've got to win the Challenge Cup and finish in the top four at the end of the season proper, you'd have to pinch yourself and go, really? You know, but I, I think, you know, everyone's worked really hard here. Um, you know, we, we, we know that if we win one out of the last three, we're definitely top four. Two definitely gets us in. One, then, it, then it's... A, then it's um, mostly there, depending on results to other clubs. But I think just the achievement uh, of us on our first year in Super League with a big brand new squad has been amazing and and something that I'll remember as a coach forever. You know, we've, we've worked hard, like I said, and I think 18 months ago when I turned up to coach with Chris Chester there, I think we only had six players. So the way that we've built the group um, and why we brought them together, the way that they've played together at times and just the style of rugby, I think, too. Our identity is certainly come, certainly starting to come forward as a, as a club, and you know the the future looks bright. So we're just going to make sure that in the future, just recruit and retention well, uh, keep developing that side with the rugby side. But for the immediate future, just take each week at a time. You know, uh, if we can be fortunate enough to finish in that top four and have a home final here, that'll be massive for us, and uh, that'll be the last time we play at home here. Um, before we go away to play a game in the in the semi final, make Old Trafford if we're lucky enough to to play well here at home. So, plenty to look forward to. Um, and then you know that's all over, and then I'm into, into the Australian camp with with the Kangaroos uh, <laughs> at the Pacific Nations. I think it's called over there. So, never ends. But just really pleased with the with the club and the, and the team, the squad at the moment. But we have got to keep our feet ground and keep working. Yeah, you've just mentioned Old Trafford. Are you, are you daring to dream yet? Or, or I think I know your, your answer is going to be you've got three games remaining. Are you, are you thinking about Old Trafford or...? or no, not, not really. I went and watched the, the football there the other week with Derek and he's sitting there talking about, imagine if we if we could do that. But I, I know that's a long way away and, you know, it'll take a little bit of a miracle to get there. But, you know, miracles do happen as we've seen this year and never right off the leopards, you know, whilst, whilst we're playing... Uh, and playing well, you know, anything can happen. But I, I think one one step at a time. Uh, uh, just the last one for me. You touched on the the kangaroo boos at, at the end of the year. Are you, I, I assume you, you're still involved with with Malvern. And yeah. uh, what's what's your contract situation like with them? Is it just a rolling year to year? Yeah, I've or? got I've got another year left there. So um, just obviously been working with Mal since 2016. So that's coming up to what is it? Eight years, seven or eight years now. So. Obviously, we've got a great friendship there, but also a good working relationship. And we've had success with the Kangaroos through that system. And, you know, always looking forward to that. Always look forward to, to working with the, some of the best players in the world. And you don't get tired of that. And, you know, I mean, it's it's two World Cups now. I think we've won four nations, uh, Commonwealth Games, gold, all, all that sort of stuff. It's all part of that, the honour of doing that and just the prestige of doing that. So luckily, you know, I'll get the opportunity to maintain that role at the end of the season. Good man, Lamy. I'll, I'll flash you on all the best for this weekend. Thanks, Drew. Thanks, guys.